All right, welcome to the channel. I have Ezra here. Uh, Ezra has an incredible story that I think will a lot of you will resonate with. And uh, I'm very excited that she's actually on the channel. So Ezra, thank you so much for joining. And so- Yeah, thank you. You bet, you bet. So Ezra, let's, let's get started, let's get into it. Um, tell us about your anxiety journey. How did all of this start? Okay, um, so I wanna say that I most likely had anxiety when I was um, probably like in middle school when I was really young. Um, and looking back at it now, I think it was like stomach issues. Like I always had a stomach ache. I was always nervous about something bad happening. I was scared of like every little animal. Like I just always had this fear, I guess. But you know, as a kid, you don't know what it is. So you kind of brush it off. and you know, you grow up. And I think really in high school was um, when I started noticing that I was having like panic attacks, but I didn't know what they were. And they were mainly induced by um, like the bright lights would cause like DPDR, like all of a sudden. And like a lot of people being like in the lunchroom or whatever it was. And um, I remember one day I was in the lunchroom and it just felt like I was in a dream. Like I was floating above myself and I was like, oh my God, like what is this? Like, am I going, going to die? Like, I didn't know what it was. And being in like, you know, 10th grade, like, you don't, you're so young, you don't know what's going on. So I start freaking out. I go to the teacher. I'm like, you need to call my mom or my sister. And I was like, I need to go home. And they're like, well, what's wrong? I was like, I, just, I don't know. And I was just like shaking and it was a panic attack. And I didn't know at the time. And when my mom came to get me, um, she's like, well, what's, you know, what's wrong? Um, and I told her, I was like, I, I felt like it was a dream. And she was like, she didn't understand. And I was like, I'm just scared. And she's like, well, what are you scared of? I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm scared of. <laughs> and so um, from then on, like it was just, every time I would go to school, I would experience it. And it kind of got worse where I would get like dizzy and lightheaded and eventually got to a point where I didn't want to leave and go to school. Um, so we went to multiple doctors. Um, they did so many tests, like everything was, fine there was nothing wrong so then they're like well uh, maybe you know seeing a psychiatrist would help and so I went and they diagnosed me with um with anxiety and depression at the time and we didn't really know exactly what anxiety was I didn't know my parents you know being from Bosnia and everything they didn't really understand too much of it um but they, they try to do oh, sorry they try to do meds um I think they gave me like Xanax for like if I would start panicking and then um I forget what the other one was but the problem was I was scared to take medication <laughs> so I didn't want to take it and when I did take it I felt so like sleepy and just off and it was just not not for me so I stopped taking it and I honestly don't know how I got out of that like whole thing in high school but I did you know I just got out I started going back to school I always had anxiety but I just didn't think about it um so I, I knew that I had anxiety like kind of throughout the years leading up to like now as an adult because every time I would drive I would get um like really anxious and like dizzy and stomach ache and all that stuff um, but I was like you know what that's just, maybe that's just who I am and maybe that's how I'm going to be you know and so fast forward to when I got out of high school I got into college and everything and it, everything was fine like I didn't have any issues I was living life and hanging out with friends all that um, then I got married moved to Chicago had my son and I noticed that I was having intrusive thoughts um, and I was like, man, why am I having these weird thoughts about like, I don't know, am I gonna like just throw my baby or this is really like, I don't know if I should like go into it, like go into super it. in depth or- Go into it, you know yeah. how- So I would- Just go for it. Yeah, yeah. So like after I had my son, you know, brought him back from the hospital and everything and I would lay in bed and I'm like, what if I just like, we had a balcony and I was like, what if I take my baby and throw him off the balcony? And I was like, oh my God, why did I just have that thought? So immediately I got up out of bed and I like start like walking around the room. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I love my, you know, I don't want anything to happen to him. Like, why am I thinking this? So I'm like, you know, just get it out your head. Maybe I was like, maybe it's like pregnancy hormones. I don't know. So I noticed that. 
Um, and I talked to my doctor and she said, that's normal. Like after having, you know, as long as you're not like, I don't know how she tried to explain it. As long as you're not like seeing, wanting to act on those things, I don't know. And I was like, but what if I, like, I just, it was too much for me to, so I talked to, like, I talked to my husband and he was like, why are you having those thoughts? Like he, he was like concerned too. And I was like, I don't know why, you know? And then it, it wasn't just about my son. It turned into like, we had a dog, we still have the same dog. And I'm like, you know, what if we're sleeping and the dog tips over the bassinet and he eats, you know, eats my son. Like, it was just like the craziest things. But at the time, like, I didn't even link it to like, you know what, those are intrusive thoughts because of anxiety. And, you know, that, you know, went away. And moving forward to like where it really started to get bad was um, July of 2020, like during the whole COVID thing. Um, I was super like focused on COVID, like super scared. Like I, I was just so worried that everybody was going to get it. Like, I didn't understand why it was happening. Like I ended up getting COVID in July, um, on my birthday, I got the results of positive for COVID. And, um, I was like, oh my gosh, that's when the anxiety really started. And I don't even think that the symptoms of COVID were as bad as the anxiety was during COVID. So like I would have panic attacks while like I was sick and all I could think about was like, I'm gonna end up in the hospital. Like all the horror stories that you hear, you know, on TV and see on TV. And I remember telling my husband, I was like, I just, I'm so scared. Like, I just don't feel like myself. And he's like, well, but you're fine. Like you're breathing fine. You, you don't, you're not really sick. And he, I was just like, I just don't feel like myself, but it really, that wasn't even COVID. It was just the anxiety of it. And from then on, I just want to say like, that's when panic attacks were, gosh, you know, like five times a day while trying to take care of my newborn. She was born in January, 2020. And I had my son too. And he was not even two yet. So I was trying to take care of them. I was trying to go to work. Um, and I was just having these panic attacks, like heart palpitations, dizziness. I would get numbness through, um, my hands and my face would get really numb. So like, I don't have like a medical background, but like, I always think of like stroke and like all these symptoms that I learned in school. And I was like, I'm, I don't know how many times I tell you, like, I thought I was having a stroke and I'm 31 years old. So like, I'm just like, I have no medical problems. And I was like, I'm having a stroke. And like, I would just get up from out of bed, um, sweaty. And I remember once my eye was twitching really bad. And I know now that that's a symptom of anxiety too, like the twitching in the lips or eyes or wherever. And I was like, that's it. I was, and I wake my husband up and I'm like, you have to, we have to go to the hospital. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, no, you know, you're fine. You're sitting here talking to me. And I was like, I don't feel good. Like I, I can't breathe. And he's like, I think you're just, you know, you just need to calm down. And he didn't understand at that time either. Um, so I knew like in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know what, this is probably anxiety. It's just back. And I haven't experienced it in so long. So I don't know how to like respond to it. I, and I didn't know how to respond to it in the past either. You know what I mean? I just got out, but I don't know how. And um, so I was like, you know, I try to calm myself down. I was trying to do like breathing and like I could never do that because it just made it worse. Um, and then again, the intrusive thoughts really started with my daughter after having my daughter too and it was just I couldn't even it got so bad where I was alone with them my husband was at work and I would have to cook dinner but this weird thought was I don't want to cook dinner because what if I faint or something or pass out while I'm cooking dinner and the stove's on and the kids are in the house by themselves and so I would hurry up and make something really really fast and then just turn up turn off the stove so I didn't have to like worry about that and it was just the craziest things and like I said I would be like nursing my daughter and I would just be having a panic attack like while nursing my daughter like I couldn't even bond with her because all I was thinking about heart attack stroke passing out like having all of these the, the symptoms are really real like I know people who don't have anxiety they're like oh it's, it's all mental but like the symptoms that you do feel like are super physical you know and so like you really feel like something bad is going to happen and it just made me so sad that I couldn't bond with her because I was over here dealing with 
but you know anxiety and so I made an appointment with my doctor and I was like I need to get you know my heart checked because and my blood work and all that stuff because I'm having like palpitations I'm having like night um, panic attacks waking up like and he's like okay that's fine so he ordered um, like an EKG and then a heart heart ultrasound and everything you know came back normal and at the time like going back I went to get my results and like driving home I was like oh you know great you know you know everything was fine and I felt good for like a day <laughs> and then like the next day it was like the same symptoms again um and I was just like how am I gonna get out of this like I just and then I started to have like um thoughts like you know what is life um what's the point of this like all the existential I can't say that word <laughs> I never can say that word like existence thoughts <laughs> um I started having that and I Sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, nothing, nothing. Keep going. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I started having that. And I remember like as a kid, I would have these thoughts, but like, or even as an adult, but like, I just never like paid attention to them. But like, now it was like, I need to know, like, I need to find out. And it was just like constantly in my head. But then it came to a point where um, it made me like sad. Like, I don't know almost kind of sad like when I would think about this stuff I would start being sad like well what you know I don't understand the point of all this and I have these two beautiful kids and a great husband and all that stuff but like what's the point like there's no point so like even my husband noticed on me that like I wasn't the same person like I was just really sad and like I didn't want to do much and um you know he's like maybe you know you should really think about like talking to someone or getting help and I was like yeah but I, I didn't, like, I didn't go talk to anyone. And I started, um, like, doing, like, research on YouTube, of course, and all that stuff. And then your channel came across. And that's when I started, like, listening to all your videos. And, like, everything you said, I was just like, oh, my God, this is me. This is me. This is me. Like, every single video I could relate to. Um, and just for anyone who's, like, listening or watching, like, I had every symptom you can think of of anxiety, like, Literally, I can't even think of them now, but every single symptom I can relate to, you know what I mean? And so I started watching your videos, but that's when the DPDR hit really bad and like nothing, nothing felt real. And I was trying to research that and trying to like come up with all these conclusions in my head. And it, it was just a mess. like I was a mess for a few months. <clears throat> I lost like 10 pounds within like two weeks. And just, I just wasn't myself. Like, I just, I felt like, I don't know, like what part of your, like myself was like gone and it was just like a body. You know what I mean? Like no connection to anyone. Um, I didn't want to do anything with friends. I didn't want to like, I, I still went to work. That was like, I, I knew in my head, I was like, I can't stop like going to work and taking my kids out and all that stuff because then I'm going to get deeper into the, you know, the anxiety. So I knew it was anxiety because I got everything checked out by my doctor, but I didn't know how to get out. So I was like, well, I'm either stuck like this and I'm going to have to cope, you know, with maybe medication or just like coping, uh, you know, things. But I, I didn't want that because I knew those things weren't like long-term, you know what I mean? And I didn't want to feel these feelings all the time. Like I didn't want to feel these feelings every time I get nervous about something or worried I didn't want to have like anxiety for like a whole month because of it you know and that's when you know you, you um had mentioned that book by Claire Weeks and I got it off Amazon and started and then once I started reading that it really like clicked and even what you said like when your nerves are sensitized that's what really clicked was just like my nerves have been sensitized for like years you know what I mean so like of course, um, you know, during a pandemic, like it was heightened. I had a baby, it was heightened. And then all that just responded in like anxiety. And so that made a lot of sense. So then I was like, okay, well, I know it's not dangerous. I know it's not going to hurt me. Like, I'm not going to go crazy, which I thought multiple times. So I was like, my kids are going to have a mom that went crazy and like all these things. Like, you probably know, like all the thoughts that go through your head, but um. And so, uh, you know, watching your videos, I joined your Facebook, like, pro like the group, um, the free group, and just reading all the posts from everybody just really like, you know, 
there's other people like me. I'm not the only one. Um, so yeah, it was just, you really, your videos really like helped explain it so much. And, and that book as well, like it really, really was just like an eye opener. So it's, it's such an incredible story. And it's like, Ezra, you know, like it's, it's such a common thing too. Like, I think uh, like, you yeah. Know, we're into mentorship too. And so you see other people. So for me, it's not that hard to make videos on this. Stuff. Like you can see how common it is, but when you're in it, you know, like, right. oh, it's like, you're the only person and it's the worst for yeah. you. Everyone else is going to get out except for you. Um, I, I know. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was like, my symptoms are like the worst. I was like, no one else has it as bad as me, which that's not true, but you think that way. Can I tell you, I've, so. I've been doing this for a while. I've heard every story in the book and deep down, I still feel like I'm the worst. I was the worst, even now. And <laughs> I know. Anxiety. And, uh, I, and I think <laughs> that's why I, I feel like if I can get out of it, literally anybody can. And that's what I find with a lot of people. Like once they're able to, they're like, yo, anyone can get out of this. Um, no, I know, I know. And I think like the worst for me was just those thoughts. Like, you know, the physical symptoms, like, after you know what they are, and you try to, like, you know, accept them, and you're like, all right, I feel dizzy, but that's okay, or I have, like, heart palpitations, but that's okay, it's gonna go away, but those thoughts were, like, what really got me, and that's what I thought, I was like, there's no one else thinking this stuff, like, there's no way that people are walking around thinking all these crazy things that I'm thinking, but, like, there is, and all, you know, all of us went through it, and everybody in the, in the program and everything, um, but I remember like being at work and it was like a new job that I started and I'm a dental hygienist. So like you have to talk to people and, you know, engage and everything. And I was so out of it with like PPDR. I was just like, felt like I was floating and I could hear my voice like somewhere in the background, but like, but you're still able to, it's so crazy how the body works because you're still able to get everything done that you need to get done. Like I drove to work. I had, so I saw all these patients and they were fine. Like but in your mind, you're thinking like, that's it. Like, you know, I'm just going to fall over. Like, there's no way. And so, yeah, it's so, it's so crazy, but yeah, you're, yeah. So right. you're so right. And I think that's for me, like during my recovery journey, that was probably one of the most surprising things, which was like, I felt like I couldn't do anything because of the way I felt and what I was experiencing. And then I felt like, and then I started doing those things. And at first I was like, this is so weird because I feel terrible. And I'm doing these things, but then it was also kind of weird yeah. to able to do those things pretty well. And it's really funny yeah. sometimes, uh, even in the mentorship, you know, we'll have people that are like talking about their struggles, but then they end up going for a massive hike, or they like do like this really <laughs> thing. And sometimes we have to remind them and say, "Look, you know, things are still happening. You're doing it." Um, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, so Ezra, yeah. how did yeah. How, how was your kind of like your recovery journey up like, like during, like once you understood what was happening and was coming out, how, how did that? So, so once I, like I said, once I started watching your videos and reading the book, I really understood like for years how I've been feeling and even leading up to like the, how I felt like when I was after COVID and everything. Um, I knew that I needed to allow it to be there and just like continue to live my life but it was like one of the hardest things I had to do because obviously like I said the, the symptoms were really real the thoughts were there um and you feel like sometimes you feel so good you're like yeah I'm gonna get out of this like I feel great like I know what it is and then it just hits you like back like all at once like it'll be like a few days you feel great or a day or two and then you feel awful for like the next five days and it was just like on and off like that. But what I did start to notice is um, <clears throat> I started wanting to do more and I was interested in other things other than just focusing and Googling anxiety or watching your videos or reading the book. Like, cause I read the book over and over again um, and watch videos over and over again. But I, I started to do things other than that. Like I started to make plans with friends and knowing that the anxiety was still going to be there like I knew I was going to feel you know these symptoms when I would drive because that was a big thing too like the driving but I still did it you know what I mean and I think that's what really helped me was I didn't just like sit back and you know just 
let this like consume consume me almost because I just wanted to I wanted to get out but I didn't realize that it is like a it's an up and down thing and it doesn't just happen like you're not just gonna like oh you're gonna allow it that's great I'm out like no the symptoms are still gonna be there like any little thing like something that makes you happy like you get excited about something you start feeling anxiety symptoms and it's like okay but I'm happy about this thing but why am I like freaking out (laughs) and I can't breathe you know what I mean so like um and that's what I had and that's all it comes down to like the sensitized nerves like that's when it clicked like that really clicked for me um and so yeah it was it was up and down um my husband was there obviously like great support like to talk to and stuff but and my mom um but he that he doesn't understand you know what I mean still like what anxiety really is but just having a support system that they'll support you no matter what like they don't have to understand what exactly what you're feeling but also not being like oh you're dramatic or you're this or you're that because that really can bring you down and I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't have that but um yeah up and down and then you start like realizing like wow like I feel so good you know what I mean and I can't some of the thoughts that I had back then I'm like what? I have those thoughts like that's so crazy to me and um so yeah yeah I I I credit a lot of my recovery to my dad and my dad Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how he understands how the mind works it was so weird he knew what was happening he could see what was happening but he didn't know what I was experiencing that's the thing I feel like people around you would be great but they'll never know um but it's often no. to find that they still know what to do because they can see it from the outside. They're a little bit separated. Um, and yeah. yeah, I've always found like it was, you know, it's pretty amazing, Ezra, because, you know, you're in mentorship and I hear you talk and you contribute a lot. And it, it's, it's so ironic for me because every, every time you say something, I'm like, yes, she's right. Like, that's exactly it. That's exactly the point I was making. But it, yeah. it, it was, your journey was still kind of on your own a little bit, right? Like we we met pretty recently and it, it's just so amazing. Yeah. So when you go through yeah. it, like two people went through it different times and yet the print, like we still came to the same conclusions when we recovered. And I feel like there's certain yeah. things that, that I find almost universal, you know, regardless. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I always say like, ultimately, like it's up to you you know what I mean? You yourself have to tell yourself because, you know, I can tell you a million times or you can tell people a million times, but until you say to yourself, like, this is, this is anxiety. This is what it is. And accept that, like, it's not, your recovery journey is not going to start until you, you know, say, you know, you do it yourself. So that's the number one thing. Like, yeah. And I was kind of stubborn too. Cause like, not that I wanted it to be something like, like medically wrong with me but it was almost like it would just go away like you know something was wrong with you you get medication or treatment for it and then it goes away you know what I mean but with anxiety it takes a while yeah yeah and it's like you know you want it over you want to get back to your old self that's what I say like I just want to be who I was um you know a few months ago but even who I was a few months ago before all the panic and stuff started I still had anxiety back then so like thinking about it now like no, I didn't want to go back to that. I just wanted to get to a point where anxiety wasn't an issue in my life. So one of the, one of the things, um, I, I realized this, I I remember this recently, like my parents were talking about my anxiety in one of my videos and my dad said something and I, and I forgot about this, but he was like, Sean was so stubborn on getting out of this really fast. And my dad was trying to tell oh, me, yeah. time, but you know, I was, I was in my young twenties and I had it like the worst thing I'd gone through is maybe like a flu where I was out for like a week. And so like, I hadn't experienced something that required patience and there was actually a part of me. I'm so lucky that it wasn't, but I, there was a part of me that was hoping it was actually something physical because for some reason I thought if it was anxiety, I took that as a character flaw in me. That I meant I was like somehow and, and oh yeah at least if it was something physical was out of my control you know and then we just treat it and it wasn't and I think a lot of my own recovery was accepting the fact that this was anxiety and, I, and there was this bias that I had this whole time and because of that I was also oh yeah stubborn, so stubborn in my journey um, yeah yeah. yeah.
For sure. I, I know what you mean because I was almost embarrassed to tell people about it or friends, you know, in my community and everything, because sometimes it's like they look at it as like, like you said, a character flaw or like you have some kind of mental illness or like, it, it's just so misunderstood. And it's like, I know so many people are dealing with it. Maybe they're not speaking up or not trying to get help because they find like people are going to judge them for it. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, it, like, once you do your research and once you find out like so many people go with it and it's and one thing I didn't want to like I don't know like if you notice like even on like Facebook or not Facebook like Instagram and like stuff like that there's people who like they have anxiety but they're like yeah I have anxiety but I cope this way and it's almost like they're using anxiety as like this I really don't know how to explain it like they don't want to like I don't want to keep anxiety in my life and just be like yeah give excuses like I have anxiety but I'm gonna carry ice with me like stuff like that you know what I mean like and I see that on Instagram a lot and I'm just like no like we don't want that it drives, <laughs> you know? it drives me nuts and like the thing is it's um if you think about it see a lot about like if you're like that kind of influencer or something like that a lot of it is about relatability and so you relate yeah. by mm -hmm. people have the same problem and yeah, I get what they're trying to do, but I remember the same thing when I was struggling, I was like, look, I don't want this to be a problem forever. This isn't a community I want to be a part of. Like, I don't know. <laughs> community. I just want to know and get out. Um, yeah. 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 And, I, and I see their point of view too. They're trying to be relatable. They're just like, look, we're just trying to help. But what it comes across us is like, oh my God, like this person's talking about their anxiety. They still haven't got out and they're like this authority figure. Does that yeah, mean? Yeah. I totally know exactly what you mean. And it's a, it's weird. It's, yeah. And it's like, well, does that mean like, I'm going to live like this forever? You know, like. And it's a, it's a, Ezra, like, you know, like now that you're, in, you see, it's kind of a weird industry. Um, I always feel like it's something that I'm in, but I, I'm not a part of, I don't want to be a part of. I don't, I see like I myself yeah. someone that helps people with anxiety, but I'm not like, I'm not somebody who's identified with the community because I never wanted to yeah. be yeah. With anxiety. And so I, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing that you brought that up. Um, Cause well, I, I see it a lot, you know what I mean? And so like, it's kind of like, well, you didn't get out of it yourself, but you're posting all these tips and tricks or like, no. you know, I'm just like, no, I, I don't want that. You know, I know, I know. We, so. uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's <laughs> I can talk yeah. a lot. About um, I know, a, I know. It's, it's yeah. What would you um? What would you tell somebody who who is in the midst of it the way you were? Like, you know, what would you tell old Ezra? What would you tell somebody who's watching this and was like, "Wow, I relate to her." And it's like in a really like rough spot right now. What would you tell that person? Oh gosh. Um, it's going to be hard. First of all, don't think it's going to be an easy journey, but just know deep down inside, you're going to get out. Like if you follow the right steps and you just, and also just trusting your like self and your body, you're gonna it's good you're gonna see you know the light at the end of the tunnel and I know like everybody says that and like oh you know they hear it all the time but you just really have to first trust yourself because if you're constantly doubting yourself like it's not gonna happen you would you know what I mean so trust yourself and then obviously just following you know accepting and, and allowing all the symptoms to be there and just really believing it's anxiety I think that's the number one thing is like believing it's anxiety even if you're feeling like you're laying down in bed you're having all these crazy thoughts your heart's palpitating like just know just I don't what I used to tell myself like all right it's gonna pass like I know what it is it's gonna be you know rough for a little bit but it's gonna pass and I'm gonna fall back asleep or whatever because I know people have issues with sleep too yeah so just trust yourself trust your body and know that you're gonna you know come out better and I know everybody says that like oh I came out better but you, you it's like a journey almost like finding yourself and even like the questions that I had with like you know what is life all that stuff like now I'm looking at it like differently kind of and just 
really wanting to know more, but not afraid of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, don't know. I know exactly what you mean. I think you're cutting off. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, of course this is gonna happen in a video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Um, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you start looking at like things differently, you really do, so. I agree. I agree. And I'm so glad you're part of the, of the team. I'm so glad you out and I'm so glad. Yeah, for sure. Me too. Um, so yeah. So, uh, for everybody else, um, if you want to know more about how to overcome or talk on, or, or want to join the community and, um, uh, download the report or even apply for the mentorship, I'll put a link down below and Ezra, thank you again. Thank you so much.